G'day, you're looking at a new utility vehicle and you're wondering, should I go a steel tray or should I run a tub? Here's some things that you might want to think about in terms of making that decision. I've owned Utes for an extraordinarily long period of time. At this point, I've owned them, I've owned dual cabs, extra cabs, single cabs, and I've owned all of them with the exception of a single cab. I've owned all of them with steel trays as well as tubs. I've never owned a single cab uh, with a steel tray and we'll get to why uh, in, a, in a moment, but uh, what do you choose? Do you choose a tub? Do you choose a steel tray? Here's some things to think about. Easy stuff out of the way right up front as usual. If you are buying a vehicle that already comes with a tub, now that will probably be, generally, anything other than the base model vehicle. If you buy a cab chassis, then you're going to have the ability to choose whatever you want to do. But generally a cab chassis will only come in the base or near the base model. So for example, you might be like an XL Ranger or an SR, um, a Workmate or an SR Hilux. And generally those options only present uh, in the base models in terms of uh, single cab and extra cab or super cab, depending on what the configuration is called by the particular manufacturer. But generally that's how it works. So if you buy a single cab utility cab chassis or an extra cab uh, utility cab chassis, you've got a choice to make. However, if you buy a dual cab or a space cab in a higher spec vehicle, or pretty much any dual cab, quite frankly, with a few exceptions, uh, it will probably come with a tub. Now the exceptions would be something like a 70 series Land Cruiser. None of them come with, they're, they're all configurations of the 70 series Land Cruiser comes as a cab chassis, so you're gonna to need to make a call there. Uh, and tubs are a fairly limited option uh, because they're not uh, available as a dealer option. You have to look further afield if you want to stick a tub on one of them. But anyway, if you buy a vehicle, space cab or dual cab with a tub on the back, then you've got to make the call as to whether you want to get rid of the tub. Uh, and you're going to have to replace your tub with something you're going to have to pay for. You get the tub for free, effectively built into the price of the vehicle. And if you take it off and fit a steel, steel tray, that's an extra amount you're going to have to outlay, obviously, as opposed to just keeping the tub. And that's why a lot of times owners, including myself, have elected to stay with the dual cab tub, even though they might see it as a compromise, although, although there are some advantages of, the, of a tub as opposed to a steel tray. If you're buying a cab chassis, uh, you have the option right up front. You're going to have to either buy a tub from the dealer, or buy a second-hand tub, which is a very good option, or you can um, look to get a steel tray manufacturer. In my experience, outside of buying it at the dealer, if you go out into the market and find a second-hand tub, and there's generally no shortages of second-hand tubs for sale, even uh, tubs that have been driven off the dealer lot, immediately removed and swapped for a steel tray, there's usually no shortage of tubs available, that can be a very cost-effective option. If you bought a space cab, you know, like an SR Hilux or something in cab chassis form, you would generally be able to find a, a space cab tub without too much difficulty, and it would probably cost you in the hundreds of dollars, not the thousands of dollars. But if you're getting a steel tray manufactured, it will be, a th it'll be thousands of dollars. You can also look for used steel trays. They do come up for sale at wreckers because the vehicle gets written off, the steel tray is still there. And you can look to buy it, and you can buy it for you know a portion of the price. That can be cost effective, uh, but it could be scratched up like this one is. You're not going to get it brand new if that's a, a concern to you or not. And it can also mi be missing things like drop sides. It may have been a, a a steel tray that was originally fitted with drop sides when it was manufactured, but when the vehicle was written off and then taken and bought by the wrecker, somewhere along the line the, the drop sides either didn't go with the vehicle when they were carted off to. Uh, the auction house to be sold or somebody stole them along the way or somebody bought them or whatever uh, they don't always come with the drop sides you can get them replaced but that's an extra cost so um, with those sort of caveats out of the way up front uh, you know generally you can either the you know my experience is you can either buy a tub or stick with the tub you're given and that's pretty much always going to be your cheapest option not always but generally that's always going to be your cheapest option so 
uh, the steel tray, getting a steel tray manufactured or even buying a used one from a wrecker, that is almost always going to cost you more unless you get onto some sort of ripper deal or you have something uh, very, very rare. Uh, and an example of that might be something like a Volkswagen Amarok single, uh, single cab tub. They're, they're pretty rare, uh, they do exist, and the single cab's not being sold in Australia anymore, so those things are, are pretty expensive. Or maybe a US truck like an F-250 or Silverado or something. Not many of them around. Uh, your Silverado gets rear-ended or, or smacked into the side, you need a new tub. Uh, they can be a little bit more difficult to track down, so you might pay a premium for them. But generally, steel tray is always going to be more than the tub. So you want to be getting an advantage with the tray. So what sort of advantages are you getting with the tray? Well, the first thing about it is they're very flexible. You have a flat platform and the flat platform is bigger than the tub. That's just how it works. So your overall working platform is significantly larger because it goes out to the very edges of the vehicle. You're not limited by the sides of the tub. And those, the, the sides of the tub is generally a waste of space. That cavity inside it, there are some exceptions like the, uh, the option on a Ram truck, the Ram box, where you actually have a lockable box on the inside the tub that runs along the side of the vehicle. That's an exception, but it's not a rule. Uh, but generally the, that cavity inside the, uh, inside the tub wall is wasted space. Whereas you capture all of that with a steel tray and you can utilize it all. And that's one of the principal benefits I find with steel trays is that huge, big workable platform. You can get lots on your tray and you can get sides made, which you kind of give you your, uh, your, tubs back, your tub sides back to a degree. Now you can get um, standard height um, drop sides, which are, you know, are just nice and short, which don't, doesn't give you a lot of depth if you need to carry something loose like gravel or dirt or whatever. Um, you can mount it up in the middle and cover it, but you know, you're not going to get that depth that a tub does. But in terms of unloading that, it's a lot more flexible in terms of um, getting it off because you drop your top drop sides down and you just shovel it off. Whereas with a tub, you've got to get inside the tub and your total area is limited in width and length, uh, but you get more depth. But you can get around that with a steel tray just by having either double or you know, extra high sides which a tray manufacturer will be able to build for you. Or I have seen tubs that will have their headboard manufactured in a way that it can make, it can, it can take either a half, you know, a normal standard depth drop side or a double heighted uh, drop side. So it gives you the options and you end up with two sets of drop sides and you just alternate them as you wish. My, uh, my tipper trailer that I own has that configuration. It has standard height drop sides, and then it also has very deep drop sides if I want to carry something uh, loose like dirt or something, like, or, or wood, if I'm carting wood, and I can fill it right up. Other thing about a steel tray, depending on the manufacturer, depending on the thickness of the steel, they can take a bit more punishment than a, than a tub. Doesn't take much to dent a tub floor. And if you have a look at a, a used jewel cab where the previous owner has really used their tub, you know, carting stuff like might be timber, or if you've carted heavy stuff like you know, concrete or bricks, doesn't take long for the, the tub to get scuffed up or for dents to be in it or, or whatever. Haven't really seen a tub wear out. I've seen it rust out. Haven't seen it wear out, but I certainly have seen plenty beat up and the wheel arches are all dented and all that sort of thing. I mean, that's what the space is used is, is for. It's a utility space for carrying stuff. Uh, but as more of these vehicles become lifestyle vehicles, it can become less palatable to people when they come to trading time to see a tray all scuffed up, which is why you know uh, plastic tray liners or bed line, spray on bed liner has become more popular. But the big thing, the big benefit about the steel tray in my mind is flexibility. It just allows you to have a lot of room in there uh, and that additional space, the space flexibility is the big benefit. And that knockabout kind of build to them where they can be you know, bashed around a fair bit uh, and keep coming back for more as it were, that's, a, that's quite a good thing. Now with a tub, uh, you lose some area, there's just no way around that. You do gain some depth, but one of the big advantages is by default, uh, it's quite easy to have a level of security with a tub that's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more expensive with a steel tray. 
And what I mean by that is you can get roller, roller shutters and, can of, um, and roller tornos for them, which have a lock, so you can lock them up with a hard surface. You can get a lift up hard torno, again with a lock. Now, can you break into these things? Yes, you can break into things, and yes, locks are for honest thieves. I get all that, but it is one level of protection that you don't necessarily have with one of these. Even a torno cover, which is just a, a factory option with pretty much anything, pretty much any dual cab, space cab with a tub, will have a factory option torno, uh, and it might be with loops, or it might be a peel and seal, or whatever it might be, but there generally will be a factory option. They're pretty low cost generally, or there's aftermarket solutions as well, and they're pretty easy to fit. Uh, now you get no drill options as well. I've run a couple of no drill options, the peel and seal type tornos, and they've been quite good. I haven't had a problem with any of them. And if the next owner doesn't like it, they can pull the whole system off. There's no holes in the tray um, and they can fit whatever they want to do. So that's not a bad option. And the ease of fitting them because they're factory options is quite good. You can put tornos over a, um, uh, over a steel tray with loops or whatever, but you would generally have to get that custom made and that can come at a price. Although uh, there are a few online outlets now where you send them the dimensions of your steel tray and drop sides and they will make you a, a torno pretty cost effectively I must say. Um, so you can use those services which have cut the price down. But that ability to be able to just cover it and so people can't by default see into what you've got in the tray, that is certainly a big benefit. Um, doesn't mean that someone can't just undo the loops or peel it back and steal whatever's in your tray, but at least they can't see it so it does a level a, provide a base level of protection. Whereas most guys with drop size, this drop size tray doesn't have a torno cover for it. Um, so, you know, if I've got something on the back of I tie it on, and if it's something really valuable, what I'll generally do, if I can, is I will put it in the, in the, uh, in the, in the cabin uh, while I'm away from the vehicle. But if it's something big and I'm in town, um, I've either got to go home and take it off or take the risk and just leave it tied on the back and hope that nobody sees it and thinks I'll grab that and then steals it. Uh, plenty of dual cab utilities out where I live in a country area which had you know, stuff on the back of it um, or they've got toolboxes. So um, on the back of it tied down, bolted down is another level of security and lock up the toolbox, that's good. Uh, but you know, plenty of people would driving around with stuff on a steel tray that is both visible and you know, apart from a rope or a ratchet strap, there's nothing really um, holding it down. Now you can't get a roller shutter for one of these, you can't get a hard top flat torno for them, but that you can get a canopy that will sit on top of drop sides if you, and some of them are, you know, manufacturer options. So for example, if you decide to get an aluminium tray, an aluminium flat top tray from somewhere like um, Flexiglass, then they will, they will give you the option of both having the aluminium tray, the drop sides, and then a canopy that can fit on the top of those drop sides that can be removed. So that's not a bad option as well. You can do that. Um, you know, that's an additional cost to you. Uh, but, and then over comparing it to a tub, it gives you the ability of a steel tray with that big uh, area, but it brings you back to something like a dual cab with a canopy, which we'll discuss in a minute, uh, which gives you the ability to lock up uh, your steel tray. So that's the other option in terms of lockability with a dual cab is you can put a, um, a canopy on it. Now I've shied away from canopies in the past, although I do have a ute with a canopy now. I've had a couple of utes with a canopy, and the reason I've shied away from them is the flexibility of the torno, and I've elected to go with you know, the ability to just pull the torno off and then carry something that sits, sits above the tray, you know, or the tub, that'll sit above the, wall, the, you know, the sides of the tub. If I have a canopy on it, and I'm picking something up, um, you know, I, and it sits above where the roof line of the canopy will be, then I, there's nothing I can do about it. I just can't carry it unless I am able to hang it out the back of the um, tailgate safely, and that's a whole other topic of conversation. But the ability to not be able to change things over quickly uh, is a bit of a lament I have of canopies. So at the, well, on the farm, I have a forklift. I can undo the, the, the mounts for my canopy, drive the forklift in and lift my canopy off. And I can do that pretty simply, but most people don't have access to that. And you're gonna need a couple of people 
to lift it on and lift it off. And if you've got to do that, get a few mates around to help you lift your canopy off if it's pretty heavy, that's a pain. Um, you know, canopies are pretty heavy and being, having to call in some help every time you want to move, you take your canopy off, if that's something you're doing regularly, it's a pain. So I've never, I haven't been a, a general ad, advocate of canopies in the past. I do run a canopy on my RAM at the moment and it has its good points. Um, I am thinking about actually changing the whole setup over to a steel tray. Uh, I'm leaning more that way because I like the flexibility of the additional flat area more so than I do um, the ability to lock it up. But certainly on when we, if we travel, if me and the family travel and we have the, my fridge freezer in the back, uh, we have the kids' bikes in the back, just being able to go lock, lock, you know, lock the tailgate, lock the canopy, walk away, and someone's going to have to break in. And they could do that, you could smash the back window and steal my stuff, sure. But you get, but that's a that's a bigger step, um, you know, that you would have to undertake to break into it. it. Just it makes it a little bit harder for someone to break uh, into my canopy because she's all locked up. There's easier options, perhaps you could put it that way. If someone else has just got a just got a um, a, a, st a, a steel tray with stuff sitting on the back of it. So canopies are good. It gives you a lot of area. Canopies give you a, a lot of volume because it basically turns the back of your utility vehicle into a station wagon. So you've got all this additional height to the top of the canopy. So that can be very useful. It gives you a large volume in there. It would really depend on what you're looking to carry in the back of your ute tub and will it fit under the canopy and will you reliably be able to fit everything you want in the back of that canopy. My ram with the long box and the, and the canopy on it, uh, I haven't had to, had to shift anything so far that I haven't been left with a heap of extra room with that canopy on. Uh, because I've got a very long tray, it's pretty wide, and with that canopy it gives me a lot of extra space. The only thing that I can't do is I can't move pallets there. Uh, I'd have to take the canopy off on that. And tubs that have the ability to fit a pallet, I remember when the Volkswagen Amaret came out, and it was quite a big deal that it fit a standard Australian pallet, that would be a Shep style pallet between the wheel arches, that's all very nice, um, but it's such a pain to load a tub with a pallet. It can be done, but if you were gonna move a pallet regularly, you wouldn't, in my opinion, you wouldn't own a tub back, because it's just too much of a pain. You gotta load it over the, over the tailgate, and if you've got a higher spec vehicle, I know that Amarok, for example, just you know, not to pick on the Amarok, but the Amarok in the base bottle has no rear bumper, so you can unhook it and the tailgate falls all the way down. So it'll go from here to here, it'll do a full you know, 180 degree fall. And so you can drive right up to the edge of the tub with the forklift and drop the load in. But if you've got one of the higher spec models with the rear bumper, you can't do that. You have to take the rear bumper off. And, be, and so that means your, um, your tailgate is at 90 degrees and you've got to load the new tub by you know, factoring in that that tailgate's sitting out where you don't want it to be and then you're gonna to have to shuffle the pallet in. Uh, it's a pain, whereas with one of these, um, I can just drive up to the side of it, put the pallet down, back away, really, really simple. So if you're moving pallets regularly, the ability to fit a standard Aussie pallet in a tub, I don't think you're gonna use that functionality. You're probably just gonna buy a steel tray because the tub's gonna to be too much of a pain in the backside. But if you wanted the ability to move a, move a pallet once a year, I don't know why that would be where you go, oh, you know, well, maybe I'll buy something that's loaded on a pallet at some point in time and I want the ability to stick it in the ute. You can have utes. There are utes on the, on the market that will fit an Aussie pallet between the wheel arches. So you, uh, you can look at that um, if you want to. So uh, that, you know, I wouldn't be buying, I, would, I certainly wouldn't be buying a ute based on its ability to fit a pallet between the wheel arches. I just, if you're gonna do it that infrequently, surely it's not that big of a deal. And if you're gonna do it frequently, I think a tub is just too much of a compromise, in my opinion. So, what would I buy? Look, it it's, depends on what you're using it for. Again, there's, there's, there's positives and negatives with, with both, obviously. I, I, a steel tray with a canopy, you've gotta be able to, you know, I, I wouldn't do it probably unless I really needed that extra space under the canopy that I was losing with a tub. So if I was going around Australia in a ute and I wanted to maximise the amount of 
space I had on my uh, tray in terms of carrying stuff and have it fully lockable, sure, I might look at a, a tray with a, with, a, with a canopy on it. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't look at that. Um, I'd probably just buy a dual cabin stick a canopy on it if that was a need for me. Uh, a steel tray, if I was moving pallets, if I really needed to maximize my load area, if I was moving stuff like gravel or soil or dirt, I would look for a steel tray. Um, you know, but with a tub, you know, if you're just a household, if you're buying it as a lifestyle vehicle and, you know, you're carting kids around with it, nothing wrong with a, with a, uh, with a, with a tub. And again, if, what would I, would I put a tonneau cover on, a hard tonneau cover or a canopy? Tornado, if I was carrying stuff from time to time that was going to be bigger than, higher than the walls of the canopy, I would buy a torno. I would buy a hard torno if I didn't really want the extra space of the, of the, of the canopy. Um, and I wanted to be able to lock it up, but I knew I was never, ever, ever going to put anything in the back of my uh, ute that was going to stand higher than the, than the walls of the tub because otherwise every time that comes around, I'm gonna to have to take the hard cover off. That's why I'm not a real advocate of hard covers. In the, in the, you know, in the existence of canopies and tornos, I'm not really an advocate. If I went to wanting to get a, a flat hard cover, I just jumped straight to a canopy because you may as well get that extra, that extra volume. I know there's a price difference, I get that, but the extra volume in the back to me makes a lot more sense, but you know, that's just my opinion. Certainly the ability to lock it, is an advantage, but to me that's that's outweighed by the fact that I could get you know a roller canopy and push it all the way back up against the headboard, and then I can carry something that stands up in the tray without having to remove the hard cover. So uh, the traditional gas strut hard cover for me is not really an appealing option, but you may disagree. That's fine. Uh, regarding canopies, um, extra volume if you want that extra volume and you want to be able to lock that up. Canopies make some good sense. They're, they can be expensive depending on what your view on expensive is, but that's one of those things. So um, in terms of resale value, it's much of a much just in my opinion. I've seen really, um, really elaborate trays come onto the market on a dual cab vehicle, like in a higher spec dual cab vehicle, like a Wild Track Ranger or an SR5 or a Rogue Hilux, you know, um, and I look at that and I go, look, there's probably six, seven, eight thousand dollars worth of tray on the back of that ute, and it's selling within, the, it's either selling at the same price or maybe a marginal five hundred dollar difference to a Ford Ranger Wild Track with similar similar kilometres that's got a tub on the back of it, because steel trays aren't for everybody. Now you can have some other flexibility options with a steel tray. You can put toolboxes underneath. Um, the, the fact that they're commonplace now is, a, is, is absolutely fantastic. They do give you a lot of flexibility to lock things up uh, if, they're, if there's something small. So if you wanted to carry around a, you know, an air compressor, a, a, a 12 volt air compressor, you can put them in there and lock it up. Ratchet straps, rope, you can have them locked up and carry them and leave the bed of your ute completely vacant as well as the interior of your car. So they're a really good little feature with a, with a steel tray but you are going to pay more going in uh, and I don't really see that recouped. Maybe sometimes people, you know, I certainly look at the quality of a tray when I looked at if I was buying a used car, a uh, used utility vehicle and I wanted a steel tray, certainly the quality of the tray and the features of the tray because you can put a trundle drawer on it, you can have a tipper, you can have uh, toolboxes, you know, but they do, it just doesn't, I wouldn't say that it always reliably gives you a huge price premium with one exception. Uh, if you buy a, um, basically if you buy a, a steel tray and put it on your ute and it costs you $7,000, it's very unlikely that it's gonna recoup that additional $7,000 for you when you go to sell the vehicle, uh, as opposed to someone who just put a $2,000 cheap steel tray on the back of it. You're not gonna get capture that $5,000 difference in my opinion. There may be exceptions that disprove the rule, but in my opinion, I don't see that happen. One exception to where I, when I see people actually recoup a significant premium for their steel trays over the standard um, or over just a standard basic steel tray is people who fit a tipper. 
if they spend the extra few thousand dollars to option a, a tipper tray as opposed to just a standard steel tray, they're always sought after um, and they do seem, they do always pretty much attract a premium. But that's going to be uh, the topic of a future video where we have a look at should you fit a tipper uh, because I do think in terms of the uh, your ability to get a premium back for the money you spend on a steel tray, the tipper is probably the, fitting a tipper is probably the smartest thing you can do. But there are some things you want to be aware of. It's not just a default decision. So there's some things you want to think about. Watch for a future video uh, on that one. So whether you go with the tub or the steel tray, again, it just depends on what you're going to do. I certainly wouldn't fit a steel tray if I had no use for it because I don't believe you're going to recoup the cost on it long term. I would find a, if you're buying a cab chassis, I would try and find a second hand tub for a few hundred dollars and fit that as opposed to spending thousands and thousands of dollars custom building a steel tray because I don't think you're going to do it. So it really comes down to I need the extra flexibility of the, of the larger uh, area on the tray or you know whatever it is that I'm doing something specialised, I want to fit toolboxes on the back of it because I'm a, you know, working on the side of the road and it doesn't work, I need more space than what a tub provides me. Uh, whatever the circumstance may be, I wouldn't fit a tray if I didn't have a genuine need for it. And certainly from a lifestyle point of view, you know, you're probably going to get by with, you know, most things you're going to be able to do with just the tub rather than putting the tray. But I do like steel trays, as I said, I am at the moment in the latter stages of considering getting a, a custom steel tray built for my ram, uh, just because I find that for, for use on the farm and such, the additional flexibility that a steel tray provides me, as opposed to the canopy over the tub, it outweighs the few times that when we go away, um, having that extra security. I, I think I can deal with that in other ways, but if your situation was reversed and you said, look, I'd like a steel tray, for the one or two times a year that I'm moving dirt around for the garden and the rest of the time I need the security, well obviously you're probably going to lean towards a tub and that makes perfect sense. So watch for a couple of videos we've got coming up. We're going to have a look at trailers, steel tray versus trailer, particularly as it relates to tippers and tipper trays because I do think they're the most, um, uh, they're the, one of the best additions you can make on your car, particularly if it's a diesel 4x4 in terms of adding value to your car when, when your, your utility vehicle when it comes to trading time but there are some exceptions to that there are some things you want to think about particularly if you i don't know that you do it just for resale value you were never ever ever going to use it but watch for that there's a couple of videos that are going to be coming up soon but i appreciate you tuning in for this one thanks for watching